and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you are so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at these from One Audio. They're the Pro C wireless headphones, and they come in at 30 USD, and they're studio grade, apparently. Anyway, let's get into it. Now in terms of the build quality of these headphones, you must remember they're only 30 USD, so they're not gonna be epic. They are very, very plasticky. The headband itself is PU leather, and you can see the One Audio branding emblazoned across the top, much like all other gaming headsets. And you've got this lovely red stitching around the side, which you may like, you may not. Personally, I'd prefer it just to all be the same color stitching. I, go, I don't go for that racy feel that this presents. On the underside of that, however, the padding is quite there's not a massive amount of it. You can tell it will wear away after, you know, a good 200 hours of use, potentially. But again, for $30, not bad at all. And you can feel the flex on the headband itself. It is very plasticky. You can almost feel it wanting to snap a little bit. But again, not too bad. As you go down from there and you pull out this, it does sound okay. But they feel kind of rigid, they feel kind of strong, and although the headband doesn't feel like it's going to take a great deal of flexing to snap, it does snap the headphones back to place quite well, which is all very good. Further down from the arms, you have this little spin lock here, so you can move the headset around, and you have these two big plastic arms coming down over the top, a design that we see on quite a lot of headphones, if we're being honest. Now, on the outside of the ear cup itself, you have this sort of milled plastic, which does unfortunately pick up quite a bit of dust but looks rather good now on the inside of the ear cups themselves you do get a generous amount of padding when you consider that these are only 30 usd they feel quite nice it's quite robust and it's quite thick and just over the driver itself there isn't any padding however the material used does have a bit of girth to it so they're not remarkably uncomfortable and the ear hole itself on the inside of the ear cup is kind of small. So for someone like me with rather large ears, my ears tend not to sit on the inside of these anyway, which is all very good. Now on the, I'm sorry, this is all very complex with how it twists around. I should point out that these are good for traveling around. You can make these a very, very small package to transport with you. And they do come with a carry case, which we'll get onto later. Now, the buttons on the ear cup are all on this one. So you do have your volume selector, up and down, which also skips the track backwards and forwards. If you hold volume up, for instance, it will just skip the track forward, which is kind of irritating because you do need to repeatedly press to get the volume where you want it to be. You also have the Bluetooth button on the inside, which doubles as the power. You just hold it down until you see the blue light, all very lovely, and syncing it with devices is a breeze. It connected to my iPhone in about two seconds, so all very, very lovely. You also have an AUX cable jack just here, which is all very nice for connecting to your PC for instance, all very lovely. And on this ear cup, you just have the micro B charging port. Now I don't like micro B, but when it's used to help keep costs down, like with this, then I don't mind too much. I think it's okay. And if you're using a cable with these, for instance, if you are on your computer, you're powering them anyway, so you don't need to really charge them up. But they're all very nice. It's just a bit, it's just a bit plasticky for me. But again, it keeps the weight down. It keeps the cost down. All very nice. So let's move on. So what do we get in the box of this $30 wireless pair of headphones? Of course, we get the obligatory paperwork with a lovely QR code for your warranty information, all very lovely. And we get this little carry case. Now this is PU leather, and it is does feel kind of cheap, but at the same time, feels better than what you'd expect for something of this cost. And it does have these wonderful little red accents for the drawstring itself, just to match the stitching on the top of the headset. We also get this, the micro B charging cable. I often say, I don't necessarily like micro B. However, when it's used to keep costs down to such an extent as this, that's all very good. And this thing's around 30 centimeters long. So you're not gonna have a wire traipsing everywhere when this is connected to a wall wart or the device that you're charging from. And then we get this, the AUX cable. And it does have an inline mic. Now most mobile phones don't necessarily have a 3.5 milli jack anymore. Certain devices, however, do much like PCs. The issue I had with this is that it's a two pole connector to connect to the headphones and a four pole connector to connect to the PC. So it's just a, a combined mic and audio connector. Sadly, I don't have one of those on my PC, so I needed a splitter for it. I haven't done an audio test for the mic with this, um, just because it is using third party bits of equipment in it. I have this thing where I feel that all testing should be done with what comes in the box, so I've not necessarily done that. I can tell you, however, it doesn't sound great over Discord. My friends were most displeased. However, 
I did connect the Vmoda add-in mic, which is around £20, and that sounded fine. I've done a mic test with that before in a previous video. I'm sure that's popping up somewhere over there, but I'm not going to do that in this video itself. If you are thinking about adding an add-in mic for this, just bear in mind at that point you're pushing the cost to around the £50 mark, which does put you into the realm of actual gaming headsets from the likes of Razer. So do be mindful of that. If, you, if you're gonna be wired in anyway, you could just get a, wire, a wired gaming headset for around the same cost as this, plus the add-in mic. If, however, you're just gaming alone when you're on the move, these are perfect. They fold in all sorts of different manners because apparently they are for the DJs because they are studio grade. I'm dubious about that one, but okay. And they are very cool. If you're using these as a gamer that's just gonna be on the go, Having something that collapses to this size is all very good. They sound fine for the gaming, so not necessarily bad. They fit comfortably into the drawstring bag, and there we go. And you can just bob all your accessories in with you, and then just sling it in your actual bag when you're traveling. That's all very convenient. And these things only weigh around 260 grams, so you're not adding a great deal of weight to your travel bag, which is all very, very lovely. But there we are. That's what comes in the box. All fairly standard and as expected, but cool. Cool, 30 quid, not bad. Now, what do these things actually sound like, I hear you say? Now, surprisingly, they're not as bad as I thought that they would be for 30 pounds. Now, the drivers on these are 50 millimeters. That, just because they're bigger, doesn't necessarily mean that they're better. It just gives greater opportunity to adjust bass and add more bass to it. And these are definitely bass boosted. That's something that became apparent to me on the first time of doing any audio testing with it. Now, in terms of music, they're better than what I thought they would be, but that bass boost does sadly drag down the mids somewhat. The separation between bass and treble is totally fine. However, with the bass boost being there and being so prevalent, it does drag the mids down somewhat, which makes it a little bit muddy, especially above 50% volume. But like I said, they are better than expected, and they are close back, which does give sort of a naturally aspirated way of isolating the sound just to you. So if you're on the train, on the move, anything like that, you don't need to worry about everyone around you being able to hear what you're listening to. In terms of movers for these, it was actually way, way better than I expected. The dialogue clarity was very, very good, again, with that separation from the bass to the treble. But again, with the bass boost, if you got to a, an exciting part of a movie, crashes, lots of bangs, you do start to experience a bit of that muddiness. But on the whole, for movers, these were pretty good. In terms of gaming, they were actually okay. Wired in, in stereo, not too bad. FPS games, you could hear the footsteps with that separation that you get, but you couldn't perceive any sort of range or distance. You knew that they were coming from right or left, but not necessarily where around in that region. I did try Windows Spatial Audio with these. Don't, it's horrendous. It made the whole thing very, very confusing. But on the whole, in stereo, gaming was pretty good, especially playing single player games like Tomb Raider was quite good with these. Elite Dangerous, I found very, very impressive on these as well. More than I thought that I would, again, on this $30 pair of headphones. Where the issues start to come, however, for me, is the 50mm drivers. All very good, but when you're at this price, you need to understand that although most drivers, or speakers as we'll call them, are made in the exact same way, they're not all coming out equal. And by equal, I mean the volume is different on every single speaker that's manufactured. When you start working up the stack to very expensive headphones, things that cost like 200 pounds, like a lot of these I have behind me, what they've done is test each of these drivers to get equal volume. So you've got the same volume from the left and the right channel at all times. Now I expected as we work this far down a stack to something that only costs $30, that this would be massively noticeable. One of the things I do want to praise One Audio for is because you didn't necessarily experience that. I wouldn't recommend going above like 70% volume in any capacity. It does get very messy, very muddy. But beneath that, it's all pretty good. And for gaming, I was pleasantly surprised. I really was. And like I said, with these being closed back, you can game on the move and not have to worry about everybody else hearing what it is that you're listening to. But I was, I was very impressed, to be honest. At this price, very, very good. I don't want to confuse anything. I keep saying at this price. These, if you bought them for $30, do not expect them to be comparable to, say, a pair of Bayer Dynamics. They're just not. Where they call a studio grade, they might not call them studio grade, but it says studio, which implies that that's what they mean, and I just don't agree with that. I don't think that they are. To me, putting something like studio on them implies very expensive, refined, and perfect monitors. These are not that, but they are good. For, what, for $30, I was remarkably impressed. For me, 
I thought they were going to be shocking. I thought this was going to be more of me sort of laying into one audio for sending these out. But at £30, I was very, very impressed. So would I recommend? For standard gaming, no. If you're just gaming on a PC at home, I'd recommend just get a normal gaming headset with a mic, all of that jazz. If you wanted something to sit alongside that for when you're on the move, for when you're mobile and gaming, then yeah, these are good. I was very impressed. There was no issues with connectivity in terms of the Bluetooth. Literally any device I had with Bluetooth on it just connected to these instantly. Not a problem at all. That's quite impressive. I normally listen to things that are quite expensive. So when I go to something that's on the cheaper side of the market such as these, I expected a massive difference. But that's not what I experienced. Not what I experienced at all. Now you can find a link for these in the description below. It's not an affiliate link. It's the one that One Audio sent out. So that'll be there for you. Um, I'm not going to put an affiliate link on this one. I feel, feel it would be rude. So I'll just use the link that they sent for me. But if you like what you saw, please do give a thumbs up. It helps the channel immensely. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, should you choose to. And if you watch to the end as a hate viewer, again, hello. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the watch time and all that. And I'm sorry I couldn't entertain you. But there we are, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.